Hello everyone and welcome to Callie's Corner on Unfiltered Gamer. I'm Callie and today I'm going to be sharing some of my favorite mystery themed board games. In these games the players, or most of the players, are trying to solve a mystery, figure out what happened, and sometimes even identify or catch the culprit. I'm going to share a couple of cooperative games where players are trying to work together to solve the mystery a couple of competitive game where players are vying against each other to be the first to solve the mystery, and even a hidden traitor game where the culprit will actually be one of the players at the table. First up, we have a competitive game, Mysterium, which plays two to seven players, takes about an hour to play, and for ages 10 and up. One player plays as the ghost of the departed. The ghost can't speak, but can use image cards to communicate. Other players are receiving these clues and trying to piece together what happened. The suspect, the location, and the weapon. Each player is piecing together their own storyline of what possibly happened. And in the final round, they'll be determining which storyline is the really what happened. I like to recommend this game to families who like Dixit or games like that and are ready to try something with a little more complexity or a little more depth. I definitely recommend having someone who is a little bit more of an experienced player play as the ghost the first time. That uh, role has the most management and different uh, strategies to think through. Next up, Paranormal Detectives, which does have some similarities to Mysterium in that one player is playing as the ghost trying to help the other players figure out what happened to the ghost. Paranormal Detective plays two to six players, takes less than an hour to play, and is recommended for ages 12 and up. While again, the ghost cannot speak, the ghost has a lot of different tools at their disposal. Other players will be using cards to ask questions of the ghost, and the cards will detect what tool the ghost can use to answer that question. And the tools are everything from a letter or a Ouija type board to different dials on the board to some rope that can be bent into different images or even drawing with the ghost's finger on someone's back. On a player's turn, they also have an opportunity to guess. And they have to guess all five elements of who was the killer, where did it happen? What was the motivation? How did they do that? And what was the weapon? And the, the ghost can't give away any information except a number out of five. That's how many guesses they got exactly correct, which is really difficult to do because you need to get those one or two exact answers that the ghost is looking for. What I like about this game is very interactive and social. There's a lot of different ways for the ghost to communicate, and the ghost also has a couple of extra tools up their sleeve that provide some agency and a really great choice in when to use those extra clues. In addition, some of your fellow detectives will be chattier than others. You can play this game as if you're trying to kind of work together, or you can try to hide some information and try to be the first one to solve the mystery. In Paranormal Detectives, the stories are very detailed, and the words you're trying to go after are pretty exact, which is one of the things that differentiates it from Mysterium, where you're trying to use images to evoke the colors or feeling or or thematic elements of the story. Whereas in Paranormal Detectives, you're really trying to get those exact words, which can be a little more cut and dry. But you're also trying to help them discover that story and story can help you figure out what happened. Figuring out that story, of course, is all a part of the fun. Next up, we have Deception, Murder in Hong Kong, which plays two to 12 players the more the better. It's recommended for ages 14 and up and takes 20 to 30 minutes to play depending on how talkative your group is. So this is a game that has a traitor element to it. All of the players will have in front of them four clues and four means of death. And at the beginning of the game, one player is marked out as the investigator 
who doesn't have those cards and similar to some of the other games we talked about is trying to help the detectives without speaking by giving out clues. In the beginning of the game, whoever is marked as the murderer will secretly show the investigate lead investigator one of their clue cards and one of their means or weapon cards and that will be the answer that everyone else around the table is trying to guess. Since only the lead investigator knows what happened and they can't talk, they'll have to use clue cards such as they might say where it happened, what the victim was like, what kind of struggle there was, what noises, stuff about the environment or the clues, and use little bullets to show those clues to the other players. Our detectives and the hidden murderer, mind you, will get a chance to discuss these clues and even go around the table speculating on who it might have been and what might have happened. Each player has exactly one guess and they have to guess everything completely correctly in order to get a nod from the lead investigator. This game is great when you have a larger group. I'd say six to eight players is ideal, though we've played it with even more than that. It's great, it can just get a little slower if you're not helping people move along in the discussion phases. It's really easy to teach and really shines at six to eight players where you get a lot of social interaction as the hidden murderer is also trying to deflect interest away from them and get some more discussion going on with the other players, which is really interesting to even to watch as the lead investigator and try to use your clues throughout the game to help guide the players in the right direction because the lead investigator will win along with the person who guesses the uh, what happened correctly. And while who you have playing as the lead investigator can affect the game a lot, it's a really short game. You can bring it out, play it again right away. Now for something a little bit different, Chronicles of Crime. And this game is different because it's completely cooperative. So all the players are working together to try to solve this crime. It plays one to four players, ages 14 and up, and each scenario takes about an hour to an hour and a half to play depending. And this is a hybrid board game in that you have the physical board game there, but you also have a app on your phone or a tablet device that is necessary in order to play the game. If you want to learn more about board game categories and the different types of board games like hybrid games, I made a video about that. I'll link it in the description below for you. In Chronicles of Crime, you'll use the app to select a scenario and start that scenario. And what's really interesting is you'll be using the app, the phone, to, to kind of do everything, interacting with the cards, the locations, and the clues in different ways. In the beginning, you'll usually start with some sort of crime scene. And what's really unique is you can actually, if you have VR, kind of do VR to examine the crime scene or just view it on your tablet or phone device. And you'll be describing what you see in the room so the other players can help you find the clues that might be pertinent to the crime. You'll use the app to scan different locations to go there. Then it'll tell you who's at the location. You'll scan their cards to talk to them. You can also ask them about other people by scanning the other people cards or ask them about certain clues that you had found in the crime scene by scanning those cards. It is a really open world and it's kind of a sandbox as for how you want to discover the world and what happened and dig into uh, the crime, which is really awesome. I know Michael and I have talked about this game in a couple of other reviews. I will link those as well down in this description below, including the expansion. What's cool about the expansions is they add totally other locations and time periods that add a whole bunch of new cards to the game, as well as lots of replayability with multiple scenarios for each game and expansion. I like that this game is 
fully cooperative. No one knows the answer. So you really are all working together to try to figure this out. And you may have different ideas on which route to go. You may be talking through some of the motivations or what the storyline might be as you discover more and more about the worlds. And the hybrid model is really fun because it's kind of got some, you know, technology, some video game element to it but it's still a physical board game and cooperative where you're able to interact socially with each other and really have a great evening together. All right, finally we have the Exit the Game series, which is kind of like an escape room in a box where you are put into a scenario or trapped somewhere and cooperatively together you're trying to escape. I also have here Adventure Games Discover the Stories by Cosmos as well, in which it's really like a choose your own adventure. It gets very deep into the story. And in a lot of these games, that's part of the fun. You're unraveling a mystery or discovering the story or world as you're trying to escape or finish the story. For the Exit the Game series, the games are for one to four players take an hour or two to play and could be for ages 10 and up or 12 and up, depending on which game. And there's a ton of games in the series. There are 15 different exit games to play and each one is totally unique. You only play it once, but they have a low price point, which makes it easy to access and play. So it's fine that you can only play them once, because a lot of the time as well, you'll be actually cutting things up or utilizing things from the box or the components to figure out the mystery and escape. This game is fully cooperative as well, so no one knows the answer, provided they haven't played that particular scenario before, and you can really get into these games. If you're like me and you like escape rooms, you like figuring out puzzles together, there's all kinds of different puzzles from different using different codecs to finding things in different images or on the box, manipulating objects or words or numbers that it covers a whole bunch of different types of puzzles, which is really great. We also have a review of at least one of these games. I'll link it down in the description below as well as a full playthrough. Definitely don't watch that unless you want spoilers, but if you want to see how one of the games plays so you can try out a different one of the games, there's 15 different ones to play and you can watch that as well. I'll link it down below. Overall, the Exit series, it has a very low price point, much lower than going out to one of those physical escape room experiences, but it'll kind of give you that flavor. Maybe you want to try this before doing that, or for some reason you're quarantined, can't go out and experience those types of things or you just wanna try something a little different with your game group night and work together and have fun. What I like about a lot of these games is that you actually kind of get to feel like a detective figuring things out, whether you're working together or working competitively with other people or just trying to decide on who amongst you might be the murderer. You get to kind of really dig into the stories. A lot of these games do a really great job of integrating game mechanics with the theme, with the stories that are in the game and have a lot of great stories, which is key for any kind of mystery. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer Callie's Corner video. I hope you'll give this video a like. And even if you like these videos, subscribe to join our community. You can also join the community by joining us on Patreon. We use our Patreon to do tons of giveaways on our Wednesday night live streams and on our website, unfilteredgamer.com. Thank you guys for watching. And as always, I look forward to seeing you guys next time.